Your people will rebuild the ancient ruins and will raise up the age-old foundations. You will be called repairer of broken walls, restorer of streets with dwellings. Isaiah 58, 12, NIV. Welcome to Outreach Connection, focusing on topics and issues that reach our communities with the love and power of Jesus Christ. Welcome, my friends, to another episode of the Outreach Connection. I'm Dr. Pepper, shaking the salt. I have been waiting five years almost for this interview. This is one of those times where you get to see and hear not only the good that God has done in the outreach of the community, but right here behind the scenes at WTJR. And this is one of our very own. He is a master of all trades. He's the engineer. He's the chief cook and bottle washer. He's run cameras. He's done sound checks. He's done a little bit of everything. And now he is going to be the co-star of the Outreach Connection, the one, the only, the man of the hour, Jim Wilson. <laughs> thanks well, for being well, with thanks me. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. I love this because I have seen you working. I know your work ethic. I know all that you do. Mm -hmm. But I also knew a little of your story, and now you're going to tell us the whole Amen. thing and what God has done for Amen. you. Amen. Okay. Amen. Well, uh, I'd like to go back to the beginning real quick, and yes. hopefully I won't spend too much time in there because I don't like to give the devil uh, That's too right. much glory. I Good. like to concentrate on the solution Come on. Uh, for the problems, not the problems themselves. Good. But uh, I was um, a troubled youth. I had, when, when I was younger, I had a problem with depression, suicidal depression. Mm -hmm. Uh, I was in psych treatment for uh, a number of months, so basically, so I wouldn't kill myself. Mm. And then I got involved with uh, drugs, not so much alcohol. I have a more of a chemically dependent mm. uh, type personality, I have come to find out. So through doing drugs, I got um, involved in breaking the law. I've been to jail 75 days back then for breaking my probation, for leaving state, and um, I got court-ordered court to drug treatment twice, uh, both one-year programs, uh, inpatient. Um, the drugs at my time, you've got to remember this is back, uh, well, I was 18 in 1980, so this is between 18 and like 23, mm -hmm. um, was acid and uh, marijuana. Mm -hmm. and speed and basically anything I had money for. But um, I, the limiting factor was just money. I mean, we'd, work, we'd do that stuff until we we're out of money. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, if steal or whatever else to get whatever more money. Get. And uh, uh, I got court ordered treatment, which was really a good thing for me. I was an inpatient at Eden Day program in Minneapolis. It's a confrontational treatment where you get together in groups. Mm -hmm and there's no escape. <laughs> they gotta get it. Yeah, <laughs> uh, people in your face uh, dealing with your issues. And this is before I was a Christian. I always believed there was a God. I wasn't raised in a Christian family. Uh, my parents were Christian. My father passed away when I was six in a car yeah. crash. And my mother tried to raise us both. Me and my sister had her problems. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, so it, and uh, there was no, really no father figure uh, in my life at that time. And uh, the, the, I'd like to say that um, I knew something about the gospel back then, but when I look back, I don't really even think I knew hardly anything at all mm. about the gospel. Did you go to Sunday school or anything? Uh, like I that? went to a Lutheran Sunday school when I was about six or seven, and I remember the little flannel grams. You yeah. know how they used to have the little flannel <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Jesus stories? Uh -huh. I can still see that in my yeah. mind's eye, but uh, I don't think it ever connected exactly what was going on. But you, you know. were believing, sort of. Well, I always believed there was a, something out yeah, there. Yeah, okay. Okay, and so when you say that to people, well, you believe there's something, okay, you're ready to get saved then, aren't uh, you? Not well, necessarily. <laughs> there's a lot of different voices in the world. Oh, yeah. And um, I listen to a lot of those different voices, and a lot of mm -hmm. them don't lead to the gospel. That's right. There's a lot of different spiritual paths a person can take yes. uh, where there's, there's power in, there. I'm not denying that but it doesn't lead to salvation or the mm -hmm. glory of God. And I found that out the hard way mm -hmm. uh, myself several times being uh, messed up. And uh, 
Anyways, what I was wanting to get at here, mm -hmm. so I don't want to waste a lot of time here, is that by going through drug treatment, I was able to quit drugs. Mm -hmm. okay, by getting busted for stealing and going to jail, uh, eventually, because I broke my probation, <laughs> I was mm -hmm. able to quit stealing. But there was something missing in my yes. life back then. I was working at a, a factory where it's at the end of the assembly line doing the same thing over and over mm. again. And it was like my mind was a million miles away, but mm -hmm. my body and hands were doing the work. Mm -hmm. I assume I was a good worker, but um, I got to the point after doing that factory work for about a year or two where I, I was either going to go crazy, mm -hmm. I was going to kill myself, or I had to do something. Mm -hmm. And I started looking beyond myself, and I, and I, I was reading not just the, uh, the New Testament at that time, but I wasn't a Christian, remember? I wasn't going to church. You matter were searching. Of fact, matter of fact, I'm not proud of this, but there has been times before that where I was one of those people who would disrupt a mm. church. Mm -hmm. I was a spiritual, rebellious person mm -hmm. against hearing words from the church. Mm -hmm. Uh, like you hypocrites, you liars, mm -hmm. you know, what do I need all this stuff for? <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm, I'm not like that anymore, thank mm -hmm. God, but mm -hmm. there was a time, and I can remember it when I was a young man, when I was like that. And um, so I started looking and, uh, into spiritual matters, and there was a book, and I didn't bring it with me, but uh, um, it was called Thomas by Thomas Kempis, Thoughts on the Imitation of Christ. Oh, yes, <laughs> I and love that. I don't know how I got Where'd it. I was at a garage sale or somewhere. But, oh, uh, <laughs> You don't yeah. start with <laughs> something yeah, I small. Uh, but um, I, I started thinking, well, you know, this, some of this makes sense to wow. me. I, and and, and uh, anyways, I was working there, and I said, uh, I need to change uh, after, you know, doing the same thing over and over mm -hmm. every day. And, I, and people who work in factories, God bless you. I'm not criticizing your work. But for me, it felt like I was losing myself mm -hmm. in, into a black hole, you know, after doing this for a while. So I said, and back then I was into riding my bicycle a lot, so um, Minneapolis has a lot of bike trails, mm. and I remember going out at night, um, six, eight, ten hours, uh, wow. and just going on their trails and then coming back. So uh, I didn't have a car back then. They rode the bus in the winter, because there is winters in Minnesota. <laughs> yeah, there are. <laughs> and then I uh, uh, rode my bike in the summer, but um, I felt at a certain point that I had to leave there because it wasn't just my mind, it was the environment, my friends, uh, my lifestyle from all the way from a child. What I mean by lifestyle is, I mean, the lifestyle that I had set up for myself, being surrounded with my friends, they, they weren't pushing me into spiritual matters. Mm -hmm. Even though we weren't going out and doing drugs anymore, it was just a secular, you know, thing where you work and you pay your bills mm -hmm. and you work and you pay your bills and you either have money for food or you don't. It's just a pattern and that's the kind of lifestyle I'm talking about here. You were where it's stagnant. Just, yeah, stagnant. There you stagnant. go. Stagnant. And uh, so I got rid of, one day I said I decided to quit and I got rid of everything I owned uh, except for my bicycle and the camping gear on my bicycle and I said I'm going to follow the great Mississippi River route oh. down to New Orleans and then I'm going to go down to New Orleans and I'm going to set, start a fire on the beach down there mm. and then I'm going to see what happens. <laughs> what a goal! Uh, what that a goal. was the only goal I had. <laughs> and uh, I left, it was um, in November. Did you tell your family what you were doing? Uh, no, I okay. wasn't. I haven't lived with my family okay. since I was 15. Okay. I didn't go into a lot of details, but right. when I was 15, I was uh, court ordered uh, because of the problems I was in. Mm -hmm. I, the state took custody of me when I was 15. Okay. I was in a halfway house uh, until I was 18, and wow. then I was 18 on my own uh, until this time frame we're talking about now. So, mm. uh, yeah. Anyways. Was there anything spiritual about your wanting to ride or about the Mississippi or about uh, I think the away? spiritual thing was I wanted to go forward or okay. die. Okay. I wanted to leave everything behind me and go forward and I didn't want anything um, holding me back or, or dragging me down. That's good. And uh, back then 
I thought I had these visions in my mind of, you know, wouldn't it be nice if there was a place like in the old Kung Fu series where mm. you would go to a monastery and you would stand outside and wait until your number was chosen. <laughs> <laughs> and then you would come into the monastery and then they would teach you about, uh, well, you know, fighting is, it would be what the Kung Fu series showed. But all, I was thinking, you know, about spirituality and all kinds mm -hmm. of stuff. And, I, and I, I had a kind of a, like a vision like that in the back of my mind, even mm. though I really didn't even know what it was, mm. what it was, or any vague thing. And another strange thing from that time mm. frame, I just thought I would mention because I find it interesting nowadays, is that I had several apartments back then, and I would set my apartments up like control rooms. No way. Yeah, and I didn't even know exactly oh. what I was doing. Uh, oh. Isn't that, you know, I would surround myself like with little desks and this is back before, you know, even had computers back then. But anyways, I look wow. back at that as interesting now, but. Uh, because you live in yeah, control rooms Yeah, I stay in control now. rooms all I've helped design control rooms. And, oh. But uh, I can't say I had a vision for television back no. then. I didn't even know I was going to get in television. But anyway, so I, oh. I started on this journey. It was November. Uh, it was snowing one day out. And you remember, I was, I've been, I was camping outside because I didn't have much money. Um, uh, and I got, I, there's, it took two weeks for me to get through um, Minnesota, Iowa, and then I came down through Missouri. I actually traveled through this area before. Down, uh, uh, down towards, the yeah, yeah, because I was following the Great River Road, which yeah. follows the Mississippi River. And um, I came in to St. Louis and I was about out of money. Uh, probably had maybe five bucks left and you know so I knew I wasn't gonna be able to make it to New Orleans on mm. five bucks you gotta eat right mm. uh, so I came into St. Louis on St. Charles Rock Road and um, because you can't go on the highway mm. so I had to go on St. Charles Rock Road to go down into St. Louis and I remember going into St. Louis and it was just like never-ending uh, Buildings, tenements. old buildings, there you go, tenements. Yeah. And I said, where in the world mm -hmm. am I heading towards? Because I've never been into St. Louis, yeah. you know. And when you're on a bike, you kind of get the feel mm -hmm. for the land, so to speak, you know, a bicycle, I mean. And uh, so mm. I ended up, and, and on the way, I had a lot of experiences. I don't know if we have time to mm -hmm. go into it all, but there was uh, a church on the way where I had stopped, and the lady said she was be praying for me, and she mm. gave me some food and stuff, uh, which I think was an uh, important uh, point. Where do you think you were? I think that was in Iowa. Yeah. See, the thing I remember about Iowa is you have to hold the white line with no shoulder and mm. two 18-wheelers. <laughs> I don't think so, many people so, have that perspective so of So when you've got death on one side and on the other side you got a crash. Wow. And so you're just focused on this white line. Mm -hmm. I've averaged about mm -hmm. 60 miles a day uh, knowing that you can't ever veer off. You drove, you rode your bike 60 miles a day? Yeah. <gasps> Approximately. <gasps> sometimes more, sometimes less. Uh, I guess I had you were about, really driven, weren't you? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. I had about 50 pounds of gear at the time, too, oh, with me. Goodness. But I left some of it behind the further I got down where it was warmer. But anyway, so I got into St. Louis. I was out of money. I went down to the bus station downtown St. Louis. Which is horrible. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I put all my stuff in the locker. Had, I think, just a couple dollars left, less than five dollars. Uh, locked my bike up to a parking meter and said, okay, now what am I going to do? I was thinking mm -hmm. I was going to go work daily labor, which I did for a couple of days in this gap here. Mm -hmm. um, someone told me about New Life Evangelistic Center, Rev Reverend Larry Rice at 1411 Locust Street in yeah. downtown St. Louis. I ended up there in the shelter. I was there a few days and um, I'd done less than a week. And I worked daily labor a few of those days. I went out to like manpower, with their version of whatever manpower was mm -hmm. back then. and. Um, but they hooked you up with it. Uh, no, they didn't. They didn't. I, the people, I, the other homeless people I talked to, hooked me up with okay. it, or the other transient people. They weren't all homeless. Some How many were tourism. living there at the time in the shelter, in and out? Sixty to hundred. Okay, which and, is probably still yeah, maybe more. Yeah, yeah. I, it's hard. It was something like that. I think it was about sixty. This one particular night, I remember. I was there for several days, and Bill Bright, not the Bill Bright everybody knows that's mm -hmm. uh, head of the Christian ministry, um, Campus Crusade, mm -hmm. Youth for Christ or whatever, but uh, a gentleman named Bill Bright was working the desk at the time, and he told me about the training program at New Life Evangelistic Center. 
And uh, at first I wasn't interested. Training for what? Uh, training to either in broadcasting or in home or uh, back then uh, home improvements such as uh, putting in wood furnaces and alternate energy and stuff mm -hmm. although the alternate energy really got in, he really got into that after I left mm -hmm. but a training program to help the homeless and other people get off the streets to turn their life around and to get back on track is basically what it was uh, it's beyond just staying in the shelter because then you become part of the program. You go into the New Life mm -hmm. Evangelistic Center of Ministry. Well, I was I, honestly, I wasn't wanting to do it at first. I was wanting to go down to New Orleans, and but and it was. And you were not Christ oriented at that no. time either. So what did you do with all this ministry you were hearing? I, it didn't have any. Okay. If it had any effect on me, I can't tell you that it did. Okay. I heard it. I didn't discount it, but. There was no supernatural mm -hmm. ear opened in my mind uh, to give it to give it any more credence than okay. anything else I heard, uh, even though I had been reading some of those things. But he told me about the training program. I was I was thirsty, I was hungry, I was homeless. You know, I'm not trying to over exaggerate things here. It was cold. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't like I was some big pilgrim on a quest here, <laughs> yeah. although in some ways I was, but you know, yeah. and uh, so I said, well, I'm going to try it out, and I tried it out. Uh, back then at New Life, they had a farm, they would send you, you would spend one week in town, we filter people out who weren't willing to quit smoking or drinking or whatever. Mm -hmm. They had a farm where you sent to in House Springs, Missouri. Mm -hmm. I was there for about three months, and we had Bible study every day. And we went to the Assembly of God Church in House Springs, Missouri. Um, something started happening. <laughs> <laughs> we know what that yeah. was. I started hearing the word every day. Mm -hmm. uh, I had an open mind that wasn't rejecting it or accepting it mm -hmm. at that time. And I went and, you know, I, I, by that time I knew the gospel plan and everything. Because, you know, you're in Bible study every day, you hear about it. But I was in the Assembly of God Church in House Springs, Missouri. This was around 1986, I think, 85, 86. And they started singing in the spirit in the front of the church. Now, you got to understand, I didn't know any Christian songs. I wasn't raised in a Christian home. I didn't know anything about the Holy Spirit, singing in the spirit, talking in tongues. I didn't know... You know, I don't know any, anything about any of this stuff other than what I'd just been in Bible study with, which was surely none of this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But something happened to me. Mm. Something supernatural happened to me by listening to those people singing in the Spirit. Mm -hmm. I closed my eyes, and for once I felt like this. there's something real here. And I wanted... Something. <laughs> I wanted part of that. You'd already been set up. God already <laughs> knew where you were headed. He knew exactly the time and the date that this was going to happen. You were set up, my friend. I went forward and mm. um, I received Jesus Christ as my Lord and right Savior. In there. I knew what I was getting into because mm -hmm. remember I had been in Bible study. Um, and you had waited out. You've got a very logical, analytical, yeah. chemical, and also, you know, electronic mind. And yeah. Um, and having been in treatment for two different times too, I had, I was kind of defensive, as you yeah. can imagine, about behavior. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's the kind of treatment I was in was in behavior modification. Mm -hmm. So they teach you a lot about you know, not just blindly jumping into things that will lead to you back to your old behavior or Good. whatever. Well, I wasn't leading back to my old behavior, but anyways, uh, I. I can't take credit for that. Right. I I don't know if I would have ever got saved mm -hmm. if I wasn't in that situation. Yeah. I hope I would have. But I had to have that time away from the world, yes. away from the workaday world to experience that. And there was a time when I was at New Life. And look, at, we haven't even got through I New know. Life. We're almost we got to get time. to New Life. <laughs> <laughs> I got a bunch of scriptures here, but there was a time at after after this, after I got saved, I was in the program, and they had uh, we work at the homeless shelter at night at the television station in the daytime, and Ray Redlick and Judy Redlick and mm -hmm. Judy Redlick at that time was the general manager of the television station, and she's blind, mm -hmm. which is an amazing thing, yes. and Ray Redlick uh, was like basically Reverend Larry Rice's right hand man. Uh, would hold uh, prayer meetings every morning, and we would sing old hymns mm -hmm. and a cappella. Mm -hmm. And uh, I learned a lot of old songs. Yes. 
I was there for three years, so you can imagine. Uh, mm -hmm. And Ray would read the scripture. He wouldn't have a lot of commentary. He'd let mm -hmm. people ask questions, and, and we would just take turns reading the scripture. Well, one day when we were there, uh, we, were, we were all gathered in this room. There's about 20 of us. And, um, you know, we were, well, not everyone there was homeless. Some people send missionaries to new life from their mission. Mm -hmm. Some people go to new life to get in the program to help the homeless, right. to, to be in a position where their hands... And, and, and their life could actually help somebody who's really in genuine need. So not every single person in the training program down there was homeless, but the majority were firmly homeless mm -hmm. or, or recovering uh, criminals, drug addicts, whatever. Uh, but not everybody. I just want to make that clear. But we were gathered in that room, and this scripture came to me. And I don't know if this was the scripture we were we were reading that morning mm -hmm. or not, but I'd like to get this Please in because because my words, you know, yes, I, I love this. talk, talk, talk. But let's talk about the Bible, right? <laughs> let's do it. Uh, this is Psalms 107.1. Oh, mm -hmm. give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good; for His mm -hmm. mercy endureth forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom He hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Mm -hmm. And gathered them out of the lands, from the east, from the west, from the north, and from the south. And that part there is where I was looking around the room thinking, look at, we're in this big circle. And, and we were gathered there together. Mm. And they wandered in the wilderness in a solitary way. They found no city to dwell in. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted in them. Then they cried out unto the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them out of their distresses. <laughs> And he led them forth by the right way, that they may go to a city of habitation. Oh, that man would praise the Lord for his goodness mm -hmm. and for his wonderful works for the children of men. For he satisfieth the longing yes. soul and filleth the hungry soul with goodness. Mm -hmm. Such as sit in darkness, in the shadow of death, being bound in affliction of an iron, mm -hmm. because they rebelled against the words of God and condemned the counsel of the Most High. Therefore he brought down their heart with labor. They fell down, and there was none to help. Mm. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, <laughs> and he saved them out of their distress. <laughs> he brought them out of darkness and the shadow of death, and break their bands in sunder. Mm. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness, and for his wonderful works to the children of men. <laughs> That is exactly your story. Amen. Everything Amen. from the darkness to the work to the wandering to the trusting and Amen. that he redeems. And if somebody out there is listening and you're hearing Jim's story and you've been wandering or bound or whatever it is, maybe you felt like getting on a bike and riding. Just listen to the rest of his story because that was just the beginning of it. God reached down with his nail-scarred hands, picked Jim up right where he met him. Jim was analytical and thinking and wanted to know and wanted to be sure. Maybe that's what's kept you. And he said, all right, God, I'm trusting you. And look what the Lord has done. You stayed with New Life for how long? Uh, three years. Three I was years. there three years. Yeah. And you were training all of this time. Uh, two years. I was in, uh, it's a two-year training program. The, the first two years uh, I was in the training program. And I was in the training program for the third year, but I became in charge of production. I, I learned production at New Life, and yeah. I used to do production here. I, I started out running camera, and then after camera, audio, then after audio, editing, then mm -hmm. after that, going out in the field with the camera, mm -hmm. and then uh, directing. And then I went between uh, New Life downtown there in Jefferson City, and we would do production back and forth. This was in my later uh, yeah. years there. And then um, I also worked master control back then if they needed uh, also master control out at the tower site, especially out there in Jeff City. You did everything. And then uh, how did you was, get to WTJR from that? Well, I was running the camera at the Capitol. This was soon after okay. Reverend Larry Rice did a march for the homeless, yes. which was a march from uh, St. Louis to Jefferson City. Mm -hmm. And we could spend the whole show talking about that. <laughs> yeah. But anyways, I was at the Capitol. They were doing some legislation. I was running a camera back then. It was a big camera with a side thing and, you know, battery belt lights and all that. But unlike today. But uh, Bill Tripp, which ran a homeless ministry here, it used to be over at Palmyra at the crossroads outside of Palmyra mm. there, came up to me and says, boy, uh, we could use the help of a guy like you up at WTJR, but uh, I don't know if they can afford to pay you anything because that suit you have on. Oh, 
<laughs> you didn't know I got the suit out of the free <laughs> store. <laughs> homeless shelter suit. <laughs> I love it. Anyway, Probably an Armani $5,000. <laughs> yeah. And uh, that's the funny thing, though, is that um, I, in some ways, when you're involved in ministry like that, you have more stuff than you do when you're not. That's right. Because uh, you're living in the ministry, you're part of the ministry. But anyways, I... I had been looking for a place at that time. I felt it was time for me to move mm -hmm. on, and New Life wanted me to stay. So, but I left honorably. I, I yes. graduated their program. I had uh, two years. I think a lot of the reason they wanted me to stay is because you got to understand the training time versus the payback right. time right. involved in this kind of work. I yeah. mean, you can train somebody for two years. Well, then hope, hopefully <laughs> you're going to get a couple of years of work out of them, right? Yeah. I mean, but anyway, no, they're you also one, they also wanting to go on, and they encouraged yeah. me in that. And uh, I came uh, here to what WTHR. Year? This was around 19, the end of 88, 89. Really? And um, Carl Geisendorfer was here mm -hmm. back then, and I came up here. And uh, the, we went to the Mississippi Grill. We got about two minutes left, but we yeah. went to the Mississippi Grill across the river, and he told me about the ministry. And uh, so I came up here. Mm. Uh, since I've been here, I went back to college because I felt the Lord yes. calling me to engineering. So I went back to college, got my degree at John Wood Local College here, associate's degree in broadcast electronics. Mm -hmm. Then later on, I went back to college again for another two years to get my electrician's license because I felt like I wanted to get at the root of it. Mm -hmm. And the interesting thing I got to mention about school is I, did, I wasn't that good in school. Mm. But after I got saved mm -hmm. and I felt the purpose in my life, I got great grades in school. Come on, there you go. Because I wanted to be there. Yes. I didn't want to escape. I wanted to embrace yes. these things. That's and good. so it really helped my grades tremendously. Mm -hmm. But I give God the glory, you know. Yes, I mean, people do. look at me now and say, well, you can do this and that. but. Uh, it was a long road of trial and error and many mistakes. I still make a lot of mistakes, but I, I, I believe that in the gospel you get back up. Mm -hmm. You have the tenacity mm -hmm. to grab a hold of something and keep on. Whether really you fail or not, That's get right. back up again Good. and again and again, yes. ten times again, yes. and then keep going and if and if it doesn't work that way then maybe another way is going to open up where you can keep going forward and getting mm -hmm. closer to the Lord. That's Amen. Good. That Amen. is awesome. What about your wife? We didn't get to hear about your uh, I met, met my wife here at the station <laughs> okay. and uh, we're, we have two children. Yes. Uh, Neil that's four and Jim that's 16 and she was a volunteer here. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and life is good. Amen. There are people Amen. listening right now. I know we ran out of time. You've just got so no. much to share. You'll have no. to come back. <laughs> but I want somebody yeah. to know that what God has done for Jim, how he picked him up. I mean, he was just, look at all of his stuff. Same with my story. Same with Donette. We've all got stories. What's yours? And what is going to be the next chapter of your life? Will you live happily ever after? God promises not only new life, abundant life, but life eternally. And there's only one way, and it's through Christ. Jim sought logically. I sought heartfelt. However you seek, seek him, and you will find. Jim, God's blessings God on bless. you, your family, your work, Thank you. everything. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, for what you have Thank done. You. And it's in Jesus' name we give you glory. I'm Dr. Pepper, shaking this off. You've been watching Outreach Connection. If you would like to contact this ministry, you may write Outreach Connection, care of CTN, WTJR, 222 North 6th Street, Quincy, Illinois, 62301. WTJR, licensed to Quincy, Illinois, maintains a public file for public inspection at our studio at 222 North 6th Street in Quincy, Illinois. Hours of our studio location, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Monday through Thursday and 9 a.m. to noon on Friday.